here uh, they come. Marcin Blaha, Tomasz Gop, and Michał Marcinkowski. Yes, big applause. And we'll be speaking about the future of the gaming because we had a spectacular success in the past recent years. Um, so the first question, the first thing I'd like to ask you, all of you, what do you think is the reason? What do you think is the source of your success, your success and the gaming industry in Poland? Because we are growing so, so fast. Uh, I was thinking quite a lot of times about, hi everybody, by the way. I was thinking quite a lot of times about the actual success of Polish people, if we could speak about anything like this. And I think the gaming industry is very rewarding in fact of being entertaining. And if, actually you're making fun. This is a unique thing. You're not making papers, you're not making bricks. And at the same time, Polish people, that's my belief and kind of homegrown analysis, are very hardworking people. And combining these things led to the success of making video games in Poland. That's my take on it. Marcin? Um, for me, it's mostly... Mm, I'm surrounded by very talented people. So basically, for me, it's just talent. I mean, uh, they are really hardworking people, but people work hard everywhere. Uh, but for some reason, uh, Polish companies are able to gather very, very talented people. And they are very passionate about their, their work. They love what they do. So for me, it's talent and love for, for making games. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Michał Marcinkowski. Um, I think th those reasons, plus uh, Poland has an enormous drive to, to be the best at something because we've always been the underdog. And other countries, uh, Europe, other European countries already have done a lot and they are at the top. And we feel like we need to do something more and we can do something more because we are uh, very talented and we want to excel in something. And I think video games is something that we can really be at the top at. We can be uh, the best in the world. We have a chance. We kind of are. <laughs> Uh, video games are pretty young, and um, it's like, you know, like w the Wild West. And uh, for Polish people, it's something new, and as you said, uh, something we can be best at. So uh, it's like uh, discovering, n you know, new lands, new territories, and uh, it's, it's still uncharted. I mean, it's, there is still something to discover, and nobody in the world did it. I mean, it's, it's, it's so young that it's still like being in, uh, an explorer in Africa, you know, in, in, previ in previous century. So it's, uh, it's fascinating, and I think that's the thing that drives people in Poland, f you know, for making games. Uh, yes, and... and Video games don't need that much resources and money. Like, we can't beat the United States in technology because they have billions of dollars. We can't do that. But video games require much less resources. I started out making video games for free. So, that, so that's, uh, that's how you can start. You can start with nothing and, and go very far. Michal, you started Transhuman Design. It's your company. Uh, tell me, how many employees do you have? I have about seven, eight employees, regular employees, but it, it goes up, up to 15 at times. Okay, I'm asking because, uh, uh, Tomasz, have, you, you have like over 100 uh, employees and you have several hundreds, right? At CD Projekt. Uh, like 400. Yeah. So it's like, my next question would be, is it hard to find employees in the gaming industry? In general, no. But it's, it, is a, it is a market, it is a, it is a business, it is a work that quite often requires uh, specialization and very certain resources. And that, that is going to give you trouble. Mm -hmm. Because specialized people are tough to find. Yeah, th there is always hard to find programmers or um, artists. And uh, 
obviously we can always hire people and coach them and train them, but uh, we need more and more uh, experienced specialists in, uh, especially programmers. Well, my, my strategy is to keep small, uh, so like 20 people is max for me, and it's hard to find good people because I try to find the best of the best. And to do that, I, I work with people from around the world. And I, I work online mainly. So we don't have really a, an office where we meet, we, we work online. And that's how I find the best of the best. And, and I have been doing this for, for nearly 10 years now. So it works for me. Um, where do you search for employees? It's like it's hard to find them, right? In, in general, in development, in, in dev industry, it's hard to convince people to go and code um, in, in, uh, in a company for, let's say, longer than a few months. They are s switching their companies uh, all the time. But in gaming industry, I guess it's even harder. Two things that spring to my mind immediately is one of the things is Everybody knows everybody, especially in the Polish industry, or most know the most. Uh, but the other thing is, we are a young industry, but at the same time, we're already past the point where things like uh, headhunting agencies or being the middleman for finding people are actually a reliable source of business. And there, there are companies like that, like, like, they're, like UK, is the, the mecca for a lot of these companies, and they, they search around the world, around the globe. So uh, people get by somehow. There are people who actually make money on being the middleman of finding guys. Uh, when it comes to CD Projekt Red, we are hiring everywhere. Uh, I mean, almost half of the employees in this moment uh, are uh, expats from everywhere, totally everywhere. Uh, but still, uh, we are looking for people in Poland, and uh, especially since we started this second studio in Krakow. Um, but it's still, it's we, we still need more. I mean, it's uh, the company is growing, and we still need more and more people, and we are looking totally everywhere. So my strategy is different, of course, because I'm independent and, and try to stay uh, small. I hire mainly people from my community, so from the community of my game. I make multiplayer games, and there's always a community around the game, and people that love the game, and people that want to help making this game. So this is how I hired 90% of people, just, just uh, players of my game that have some skill and want to help me and they start working with me and, and slowly I start hiring them and paying them money and that's how I'm building my company. How and do you determine whether someone is gonna to be a bit more than a player? Whether it's gonna be a team spirit or a hard working guy? How do you determine that? Uh, I test them. I, 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 if somebody wants to help, I always say yes. Help me with this and sometimes people can't do it, and sometimes people can. I, I just test, just give them non, uh, not very important tasks, and slowly move to more important, and and that's how I term this. Um, okay, Stay, uh, staying in the topic of the employees, but I, I will move uh, later to the community too. Um, but staying with this, I know there are some game dev uh, faculties at universities. And also, I have heard about the, some classes in uh, high schools. So what do you think about this thing? Because you're speaking about the uh, experienced employees. How, how about guys from, from some studies? One thing that we need to make clear in here is that uh, the game dev was first. And the aftermath of that was creating like uh, you know, divisions on, 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 on high schools and in universities. So they need to catch up. But having said that and then putting that aside, it's great that they're there and they're growing quite fast. And I have seen within couple last couple years, four or five years, people who actually um, are doing quite well in the game dev industry, uh, particularly in CI games where I've noticed that uh, there are guys, but, but it, it's still like, 
uh, I think more people are hired because of their passion than because of the fact that they've, you know, finished a university. And uh, I think that those schools are important, but uh, they are never as good as real experience. Uh, and when it, when it comes to me, when I have to hire someone, uh, I prefer someone who has real experience, like, I don't know, something published, published something shipped, uh, than someone, uh, a graduate. So uh, they are very good because um, they, uh, let people think about making games. They um, they produce the right mindset, but uh, st still real experience and uh, just making a game is more valuable and more um, and it makes uh, how to say it. Uh, I mean, people uh, who have real experience uh, are more valuable for us than people who graduated schools. Uh, the thing is, you don't need formal education to make games. So I don't know what you think about it. Uh, for me, I, I don't really hire people because of their uh, education. And I don't know if this will help in the long term. Time will tell, probably if people that have formal games education will make better games or will make better employees. I, I can't tell, we'll see. Okay, so let's move to the community because I know uh, you're all in community and community, uh, game dev community in Poland is growing fast and it's, um, I would say it's a closed group also um, where people share their ideas, their experience um, you know each other from the community, I guess. Um, so, how, because we, we are speaking about startups here and the community too. So, how do you think community um, changes uh, the, f the way you think about creating games, the way you create games? You mean the community of game developers? Or? Yep, exactly, game dev uh, community. I think the, the Polish game dev community is, is fantastic. It's very inspiring, it's fun. We, it's relatively small, so we all know each other. And we meet from time to time on conferences, on, uh, on expositions. And it's, it's, it's simply fun and we help each other. We help each other out. And I hope it will stay this way. Uh, <clears throat> I think that... Uh, people in Polish gaming community are very open-minded and we really have this flow of ideas. People exchange ideas, they criticize uh, other people's ideas, they, they are not afraid, you know, to, to sometimes heavily discuss something. And uh, it's very good because uh, people talk all the time and uh, they are open and... Um, um, <laughs> this flow, I said before, it really exists. One thing that I have learned while spending a lot of time with the Polish game dev community, because we indeed have our closed internet space where we meet and discuss, is the Polish devs are very vocal about expressing their opinion, and they're very willing. This is what Marcin mentioned. The most important thing that took me actually a year or two is to figure out which feedback comes from people who have a lot of experience and which feedback is just a fanboy screaming that he loves this or that. This is the tough part, but if you want feedback, you're gonna get a lot of it. But filtering that out is on your own. And, and you know, so this is like a good and a bad side of Polish community being so open, so vocal, and so willing to express their opinion. It's good, but it's also tough. Do you also have, um, I mean, Marcin, uh, Michal, do you, do you also have such a problem like, um, like uh, Tomasz said? Yeah, but it's, it's something normal. I mean, it's always there, so. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, for me, the best opinions come from the most experienced game developers and even the most known. 
And the, the nice thing is that you can send their game to them, and th I think they will gladly help, even if you're uh, uh, a newbie here. Okay. Um, so your projects, I mean, you created games that are pretty well, it's, it's not much said, but they are very well uh, known in the world. So um, going global was hard for you? What are, what are your experiences of going global? Could you, could you repeat the question? OK, so um, was it hard for you to go global? I, I know for CD projects, projects it yeah. wasn't <laughs> very yeah, tough. You know, I'm, uh, I'm just a worker in the company, so uh, uh, other people went global. I, I was just making the game. Okay. I think it's, it's not a, something very unusual uh, provided you create your games for a market that is not only feeding upon the opinions from Poland, for example, because there are a lot of opinions. I found that throughout that over 10 years that I spent in the industry, a lot of opinions that you get, not only from developers, but also from the customers, uh, from the players, could be biased based on the region where they, uh, where they play. Like a couple years back, it was mainly PC. It can get a decent or, a, or a objective console feedback in Poland 10 years ago. That, that was a very, very tough thing to get. Uh, but if you're creating games with that in mind, and if you're trying to build your company on, like, the, if you're making mainstream games, if you're making commercial games, you are thinking in terms of commercial success. This is normal. And then if you're thinking about foreign customers, you're going to be all right. But a lot of people actually don't, and then they, they got to learn that the hard way. Um, did it actually help you by making uh, games di in, in a di digital distribution, especially for you, I guess, because your game was mainly, I guess, uh, distributed digitally. So how did it help you? It, it helped me in a way that I survived and I live now and I have made money out of games. <laughs> and that's how it helped me. Uh, returning back to the first question, uh, they say the most important language in game development is, is English. Because you need to know English just to go global. I, I don't think there's a point in not going global. That's your starting point. You have to think about the whole world because that's where all the players are. And games can be global and should be global. Uh, I think it's... I, I can't imagine doing just a game like in Polish and publishing in, in Poland. It's, it makes no sense. Mm. So start with, with global in, in your mind. And digital distribution is a way to go there. It's the easiest, fastest way you can. I started with just publishing a file on the internet uh, 10 years ago with my game Soldat. And that's how it all started, with, with zero money, zero marketing. That's how I started. Do you think digital distribution will finally so someday push out the normal typical store distribu distribution? I think there are more people who would still like that to happen within the industry than those who are against it. But still, it's going to be down to decision of customers. And it's not going to happen right now. But if I was to pick up a straw and guess, I, I think that will happen. But I'm not the one to say whether it's going to be a year or 10 years from now or 50 years from now. That's no, I, I don't speculate like that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> well, the trend is that digital distribution is going to dominate, and it's, and it's how you think started dominating two years ago or, or something. And uh, I think mm, the retail and box copies of the game will remain, but mainly as something that you want to buy as a collector's edition or a gift or something like that. It's going to be very minimal. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking about. I mean, um, the case of the the Witcher is, um, I guess, the good example here, um, where you create lots of additional things, stuff like um, some collect co collectible things you you can buy additionally apart from the game. So, do you think it will move that way? That some games will uh, yeah. have some additional things to buy. Yeah. Uh, but it started long before The Witcher. I mean, uh, many games have their own comics, uh, even movies. Uh, 
even Angry Birds have their own movie, so, uh, so yeah, it's happening and uh, probably soon we won't, uh, right now we can tell, we can say, okay, uh, the game is the, uh, is the main product and we have some additional products, but probably soon we, we won't be able to tell it. I mean, it's, it will be like one big franchise uh, with you know, spectrum of products. Um, I was actually working on The Witcher 2, and I remember it was very important for the, uh, the, the, the creators and publishers of the game to deliver the uh, box in which you had a game and a lot of physical value, physical products in it, that meant that you were getting a value for your money. We struggled a lot with the distributors around the... They struggled a lot. We, anyways with the distributors, uh, distributors around the globe to squeeze as much physical content inside a box more than anyone else to give people feeling that uh, they, are buying, they are buying a physical copy of the game not just because they like the box, but it is a different than a lot of physical games. It's not just a code that you put in and download the game from the internet. There was a lot more. And these are cases like this. Uh, still justify releasing uh, physical games. But as Michal said, probably soon, um, not a lot of games are going to be doing that. And games that you buy in box are going to resemble what today we have, like a musical albums on CDs. Still people buy it, but it's for, for nerds, right? Um, I buy them. <laughs> um, apart from creating a game itself, um, you are creating games, especially uh, you at CI Games and also uh, CD Projekt, because you created a game, uh, King Arthur's Gold, so it's not typically a uh, game about Polish land, Pol uh, Poland. Um, so um, that way, um, you're exporting our history. I mean, Enemy Front is the, the way to uh, tell people uh, in the foreign countries about our history. Um, do you think people in Western countries, maybe Eastern countries, are more and more interested in our history here in Central Europe? I think that's a stretch. That's, that's my opinion. I, mm, I would love that to happen that way, but when you're making games, they have to be fun. And this is your fundamental uh, principle while you're making games. Uh, no, that would be that would be tough to say that that we make the world learn Polish history. I don't believe in that unless Marcin is going to prove me wrong. No, no, we we are we are not exporting the culture. We are uh, earning money. So. Uh, but we can do it uh, in the way we like or not. So um, Stephen King said that uh, uh, when you are going to write a book, write about something familiar. So uh, for us, uh, Poland is familiar. I mean, I mean, our culture, our history, our literature. So uh, making The Witcher was a great opportunity to make something uh, something we, we, we are close to. And uh, we did it with, with love, and it was love for, you know, for our childhood, for, for books we read, for, uh, for uh, landscapes we saw, for, uh, for our childhood or our uh, everything. And uh, when we are we are exporting Polish culture, but uh, that was we, we are not that was not our goal. I mean, we we just wanted to make a game we like and uh, obviously successful game. I mean, com commercial, uh, um, but we didn't want to sell Polish culture outside. I think the present is more important than, than our history, so I would like people to think uh, that if a game comes out of Poland, it's a very good game, and so they associate Polish with really good quality games. It, that, that's more important to me than, than making them learn our history. 
and games are going to become Polish history soon. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the goal. And we are going to be the history. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, okay, so let's uh, create some history and speak about the future. Um, what do you think, where do you think our uh, Polish game industry will go in the next few years? Will we create some astonishing games for the maybe virtual reality goggles or stuff like that? Uh, I'm not experienced in VR, not experienced in mobile market. That is going to be a very tough topic for me to tackle. Uh, but the most important thing that I think could be my answer to your question is mm, with both the games like The Witcher franchise and, for example, a Super Hot, these cases prove that Polish game dev is capable of going both ways, of making big and making small, making big awesome and small awesome, because both of these directions are cool. And, and, and we were never growing so fast as we are now. And that means that even if one percentile of ideas is awesome, it's still going to be more ideas than we've had 10 years ago, five years ago, a year ago, because we're growing so fast. So we're going to be, uh, there's not going to be a wonder in that. This is going to be a natural process. But statistics are going to prove the, the fact that, that they stay the same. And there's just going to be more per value. There's going to be more, you know, better products in Poland. And that's why I'm happy that we're growing as an industry. Um, and for me, um, I think that uh, in this uh, wild west, um, there is still uh, some land to be you know, taken. And uh, I can even see those young people who are going to take, the, to claim it. And um, I think that uh, the industry will grow. And uh, I expect many, many small companies. Uh, Trying to, to trying to succeed, and um, some of them obviously fail, but uh, some of them will survive, uh, and I think that uh, the industry will grow uh, not uh, vertically. I mean that companies will become bigger and bigger, but uh, horiz hor horizontally. I mean. Uh, I expect many, many new companies soon, new small companies. I think if, if all goes smoothly and there are no like outside interferences like the government trying to interfere with, with the growth of this industry, we can really uh, excel and, and grow really large. We see this trend. There's hundreds of companies registered uh, right now making just games. Uh, in terms of technologies like VR, uh, I, I don't know. I think other countries have, have more resources and, and more money than we, we are. I'm sure we can compete in terms of innovative games, in terms of, of great ideas and, and great, great in general games. Um, do you think big companies from Western countries are afraid of us, like Ubisoft? Warner Bros. No, um, and I know they're not because I was never afraid of them. It doesn't work that way. If you're in a creative industry, that means that the cheapest things are also the most expensive ones. It's the ideas. If you have them, nobody's going to take it away from you. Even if you get stupid drunk and you tell somebody about your great idea of a graveyard simulator, whatever, they're not going to make the game that is going to be as successful as you make it, when you get sober, of course. Yeah, obviously, uh, obviously there is competition, but it's very healthy and it's just good. And uh, we are not afraid of them, they are not afraid of us. Uh, I think we are part of big entertainment business and everyone is trying to be better and that's all. I, I like to imagine that they are afraid of us. So, so it's a funny thought to me. I like to imagine myself as this David fighting with the biblical Goliath, and, and it's, it's just challenging for me. Well, okay, but I was asking this because um, uh, there's a 
uh, lots and lots of uh, mo more and more companies, uh, like independent small studios like yours in particular, um, coming up and making games that are success. They are, they are, there's a lot of people that complain about the big games, like big game uh, creators, big studios, that they are making um, bad games, basically. And um, don't you think that people would like to get smaller, um, maybe maybe not the triple a games but um games created by smaller studios but better with better quality we are creating great quality in poland so you're asking if if players want to mm -hmm. play smaller games what do you think they they want more i i can't say i think the we can just watch trends uh, like mm -hmm. in 2008 when minecraft uh, came out, there was a big trend uh, to play smaller games, like the whole world suddenly noticed that there's these small companies or, or just one-man teams making games and that these games are great and, and in some terms better than the AAA titles. Uh, so this big trend started and the, the, the name Independent Game Developer uh, came, came out. Before that, I wasn't known as an indie developer, I, I was just making games and suddenly I'm an indie game developer. So we see this trend, but I think, uh, I don't think players uh, particularly, particularly want to pick this or the other. I think they just want to play good games. So, so I think this works both ways. Like the big companies see good ideas in the small games and they learn from that and, and it all just evolves like that but, uh, but game developers sometimes want to uh, pick uh, s to you know to go indie and make something smaller something uh, they like more and uh, it's also it's also a very natural trend I mean sometimes people are leaving AAA companies and start their own business with and start doing something totally different they did before and it's also very good for the industry because uh, it's constantly changing and uh, people trying to, it's innovative. I mean, people are trying, uh, when they get bo bored, they, they are try trying to do something totally new. They are trying to discover something and uh, it, it makes the industry very fresh and, uh, it, it, keeps, and it keeps the industry young. Uh, I just wanted to pick on one thing that you said. A lot of people complain that there are a lot of bad big games coming out these days, and it's true. And I also think it's silly. Um, there's probably quite a lot of small games that are bad coming out as well, but what I'm trying to say is it's natural to complain about big bad games because when you're investing millions of dollars or zlotties, going bad with this is probably a bit more silly than just spending a couple more months in your mom's flat and not paying your own rent because you can afford that. So, yeah, it's bad that these games happen, but I don't think they will disappear. There will, because it's a business, you can invest your money in a wrong way in whatever business you are, whether you're making a one-person team or you're making a $100 million uh, big uh, franchise. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of big bad games and there are a lot of bad small games and taking lessons from that is a different different story big studios from the western countries have their um, divisions in different countries so when do you think we'll have our own studio polish studio abroad ci games have tried that couple times in the past uh, it didn't work quite well due to many factors uh, and, well, I can't speak for the CEO of the company, but I'm not aware of any plans of that right now. Um, maybe, maybe uh, some time ahead. Uh, I don't know about CD Projekt, but CA Games, isn't, is, is, I don't know if it's planning anything like that right now. Uh, 
we have very small division in Santa Monica in California, and when it was announced uh, internally, everybody wanted to move there. Uh, but in fact, it's it's very small, and it's mostly uh, you know about marketing and PR. Um, yeah, but but I think it's real. I mean, it's uh, making game. Um, I mean, it's making game does not doesn't know borders. I mean, it's international. You, 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 you uh, said before that you are cooperating with community, and uh, when you have uh, internet, it's it, everything is possible. So why not? Yes, you, you don't have to think in terms of a physical location of your company. I, I work mainly, mainly online and uh, work with people from around the world, and this is entirely possible, and, and it broadens your perspectives if you think uh, globally, even in terms of your own company. Okay, maybe there's uh, one question from the audience. Do you have any questions of the future? There's a question. Hello, my name is Ina, and I have a question. Uh, how you think uh, which skills most important and preferable for game designers? Uh, short announcement. Patience. Oh, somebody lost his card. Yeah. Being humble. We have the next, uh, the last speaker. Uh, I don't really know. <laughs> I mean, um, being talented probably, but it's not a skill. I will elaborate. I think patience, because game development is typically hard and long. Uh, games take from one year to three years, sometimes even five years. And, and, and everything you do has to be very good, because there's a lot of people doing this. There's a lot of games coming out, and you really have to be the best at it. So, so you have to develop just patience to, to work every day at what you're doing for, for years. So that, that's why I say you have to love this, because that's what will help you do this for a long time. Uh, just in case you were looking for an answer like 3D modeling or making normal maps or programming the low-level AI, this is not the one that you're going to get. Because these skills are very important, and we have a lot of people like this, but among, for example, already AI programmers, only ones with patience, being humble, and talent they will stay in the industry. So these three are universal. The other ones, you know. It's because we might say that, for example, 3D modeling is the most important thing right now. But in five years, who knows? Maybe you won't need that. Maybe it will just be scanning stuff, and, and it will happen by itself, and, and every 3D modeler <laughs> will be out of work. Who knows? This is a fast developing industry. Let's hope we'll have more and more successes with which, which whatever comes next <laughs> in the next years. Okay, our guests were Tomasz uh, Gop from CI Games, Marcin Blahas from CD Projekt Red, and Ma Michał Marcinkowski uh, from Transhuman Design. Thank you very much.